ruling Sainuri Party won a landslide victory in yesterday's by-elections, empowering President Park Geun-hye's reform plans. Samsung Electronics is suffering a slump in the smartphone market. All eyes are on how the IT giant overcomes this crisis. And cool urban spots, places across the city where you can chase away the heat and enjoy culture at the same time. Hello and welcome to News Today on KBS World. It's Thursday, July 31st. I'm Luke Clary. The ruling Sainuri Party won a landslide victory in yesterday's by-elections, empowering President Park Geun-hye to push her reform plans forward. The by-election results can be considered a mid-term evaluation of the Park administration. The latest by-elections were considered the mid-term evaluation of the Park Geun-hye administration. Although Cheung Wa-dae didn't issue any official statement, the presidential office obviously welcomed the ruling party's overwhelming victory. Lee Jung-hyun, former presidential senior press secretary and one of President Park's closest associates, notched the most surprising victory by winning in the Honam region. Honam area is the traditional stronghold of the opposition party. The ruling party's platform was economic revival, while the opposition camp urged due accountability for the Seoul ferry disaster. So the latest election results are sure to provide added impetus to the President Park's plan to rejuvenate the economy. Pollsters believe that the economic revival measures implemented since the inauguration of Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister Choi Kyung-wan have swayed the voters. In spite of the controversy surrounding the ferry sinking and a series of failed appointments, President Park now has gained enough momentum to drive forward her three-year economic reform plans and other national reform projects. Also, bills pending in the National Assembly are likely to be processed quicker now that the governing party has become the solid majority in the parliament. However, the ruling party candidates did not play up their ties to the president during their campaigning, but instead rallied behind the party platform. Therefore, communication between the Sinuri party and the presidential office became that much more crucial to running government affairs smoothly. Samsung Electronics is suffering from the slowed growth of the smartphone market. The South Korean IT giant posted poor business results in the second quarter of this year. All eyes are on what business strategies the South Korean IT giant will take to overcome the crisis. Last year, Samsung Electronics began introducing a series of wristwatch-style smart gear. Samsung views wearable gear paired to smartphones as a new driving force for growth. Coming home. In addition to smartphones, the company is also focusing on projects such as smart homes, connecting appliances like TVs, refrigerators, and washing machines both on and offline. Samsung's strategy is to fully utilize its technological capabilities in producing everything from home appliances to semiconductor chips, in contrast with its competition. In the Internet of Things sector, Google and Apple are leading the pack technologically through mergers and acquisitions. Meanwhile, Chinese companies are closing in on Samsung in the market for low-priced wearable gadgets. Xiaomi Tech, known as the Apple of China, debuted a wearable smart device priced at approximately 13 U.S. dollars. With its pricing edge, the Chinese company is posing a formidable challenge. Samsung is a very good thing. It is a very good thing. Concerns have been voiced that if Samsung fails to develop new and innovative products, its current precarious state in the smartphone market, sandwiched between Apple and Chinese companies, may further extend to newer business fields as well. The prosecution questioned Yang Hui Jung, the late ferry owner Yu Byung Un's chauffeur, for two straight days before letting him go home. The driver allegedly helped Yu flee, but he has repeatedly told police that he didn't know where Yu was over the last days of his life or whether there were any organized escape plans. Yang Huizhong, the chauffeur for the late Yu byung had turned himself in on July 29th. The prosecutors grilled him for two consecutive days before allowing him to return home. <laughs> Since Yang had accompanied Yu from the early stage of his flight, the prosecutors have focused their questions on the ferry owner's whereabouts before his mysterious death. But Yang repeated throughout the two-day questioning that he had fled alone without contacting his employer, who was staying at the vacation home in Suncheon on May 25th. 
Yang claimed that he doesn't know how Yu died because he hadn't been to Sunchon since his solo getaway and hadn't even attempted to find Yu. Not only Yang, but other close associates of Yu Byung-an have all said that they don't know anything about how he had died. The prosecution is trying to find evidence proving that Yang and 10 other associates accused of helping the late ferry owner evade the police had followed a detailed escape plan. In April, a group of senior soldiers beat a subordinate to death in an army unit. This was not a simple case of violence as the victim suffered from unimaginably cruel bullying. Even an officer was among the tormentors. In April of this year, a private identified by a surname Yun was beaten to death by four senior soldiers at the barracks of the Army's 28th Division. <laughs> However, it was not a case of simple violence. Military investigation records show that senior soldiers routinely beat and bullied their subordinates. Senior soldiers physically punished subordinates until 3 a.m. and subsequently did not let them go to sleep. They made subordinates eat entire tubes of toothpaste or poured water from 1.5-liter bottles on their faces. Subordinates were even made to mimic dogs and to lick phlegm from the floor. The issue is even graver for officers who are responsible for supervising soldiers. One staff sergeant turned a blind eye to bullies even when he saw them beat a subordinate. Moreover, he himself was arrested on assault charges. The army dismissed the commanders of the battalion and the company from office, but military authorities have come under fire for shifting responsibility to field commanders without proper efforts to root out the problem. Employees of one of Korea's largest retailers, E-Mart, are crying invasion of privacy after store managers searched employee lockers without consent. Lawsuits may follow. At the Emar store located in Bucheon, Gyeonggi province, employees are provided with private lockers to keep their personal belongings. About 10 days ago, the store management opened all 500 lockers without informing the employees. The management admit that they had searched the cabinets only after the workers complained the next day that some items were missing. <laughs> The management even took photos of the items inside the lockers and displayed them at the company cafeteria. Another Emart branch store gave notice last month that it would randomly inspect private cabinets. The Emart employee lockers can be opened only by entering PIN numbers. However, store managers keep the master key, which allows them free access to the private space. Emar's labor union plans to take legal measures after figuring out how many stores had conducted such illegal searches. A court has ruled in favor of a woman who sued her employer for overworking her during her pregnancy. The bench decided that the definition of overwork for pregnant women must be different from that for ordinary workers. A woman identified by her surname Hung was employed at the Korean Embassy in Colombia. In April 2012, she became pregnant, but her workload only increased. The extra work was largely due to preparations for the South Korean president's visit to Colombia. A day before the ceremony, the pregnant woman fell ill and collapsed. She had suffered cerebral hemorrhaging. Having had no health problems before the incident, she requested a sick leave, claiming that her illness was caused by overwork and stress. Her request, however, was rejected. In the five months spent preparing for the event, Song worked 20 to 30 hours of overtime a week. The embassy turned down her request because it did not judge this amount of extra work to be excessive. However, the court's ruling was not in agreement. It said the fact that the woman was pregnant at the time should be taken into consideration. The bench explained that overwork and stress can do more physical harm to pregnant women than to ordinary workers in general. The 
The court also pointed out that Sung was clearly burdened with an increased workload compared with her load prior to her illness, in violation of legislation stipulating the protection of pregnant women. You don't have to travel too far to beat the heat. There are many places in urban areas where you can chase away the heat and enjoy culture at the same time. Huge balloons have been installed in the yard of this art museum. Walking among the floating pillars, you can feel the water droplets caressing your skin. After climbing a staircase, you're rewarded with a scenic view of Mount Inwang. This artwork has received an award at the contest themed after shade, shelter and water. A painting of Audrey Hepburn shows the famous actress smiling playfully at spectators. And this painting was painted with hands without using any brushes. It looks like either a waterfall or a blue sky peeking through white clouds. The exhibition puts on display the works of some 20 Korean contemporary artists such as Kim Hwan Gi and Liu Fan. They all feature the color blue, which creates a cool atmosphere during the hot sizzling summer. These works of art defy the stereotype and provide visitors with an oasis-like experience in the heart of a big city. Korea's two large entertainment agencies, SM and YG, have simultaneously unveiled their new music groups. This and more on today's entertainment segment. This video was a teaser for the debut of the new five-member idol group, Winner. It's the first male idol group to be introduced by YG Entertainment since Big Bang's debut eight years ago. Its members received recognition for their impressive talent by winning an audition show. Winner is to debut officially in early August with the release of their new single. SM Entertainment's new girl group Red Velvet is also scheduled to debut early next month with the song Happiness. The two new groups are expected to become fierce rivals as they are managed by two of the top entertainment agencies in Korea. The movies Revive by director Im Gwon Tak and Hell of Freedom by director Hong Sang Soo have been invited to the Masters category of the Toronto International Film Festival, one of the world's top four international film festivals. The Masters category introduces new works by influential art film directors from across the globe. It's director Im Gwon Tak's third movie to be shown in the Masters category after the movies Low Life in 2004 and Beyond the Years in 2007. Hong Sang Soo also has been invited to the Masters category for three years in a row since 2012. Idol group JYJ's agency says the group's second studio album has received 120,000 preliminary orders. The album's title track topped seven music charts shortly after its release. JYJ attended a fan exposition at the COEX Center in Seoul today and will soon embark on a nationwide tour. Every summer, the part-time job market in Korea is flooded with unusual jobs that offer not only great money, but exciting and memorable experiences. Here are some awesome summer jobs that young Koreans fight over. A snowy slope reaches almost to the ceiling. This is an indoor ski resort where people can enjoy winter sports all year round. Doesn't it make you feel like you've been warped into the middle of winter? Here are some young Koreans who won't be tempted to ski down the slope. They're the resort's part-time workers. The most important task for the part-timers here is to fill up the holes with snow and even out the slopes to make skiing safer for the skiers. But another crucial job awaits those working in this artificial ski resort with a ceiling of over 200 meters high. These part-time workers are paid a little under $1,400 a month, but they wouldn't trade this job for anything. Yeah. 
These students are going to show us another great summertime job. But curiously, the first thing they do is put on layers of heavy winter clothes. And to top it off, they put on earmuffs, completing the most unlikely outfit for the sweltering summer weather. They finally enter their workplace, which happens to be an ice making plant. A blast of cold air hits them as soon as they enter the facility. Inside, the temperature is a freezing 20 degrees Celsius below zero. Competition is fierce for this job since additional hires are needed only during the summer when the demand for ice spikes. All combined, this ice weighs 1.4 tons. Bigger bags of ice are being produced right next to the stacks. The ice cubes come from these big blocks of ice. Another job for these young workers is to slide the big ice blocks into the cutting machine, which breaks them into smaller ice chunks. The workers have to quickly bag the ice cubes before they melt. <laughs> Gapyeong in Gyeonggi province is known as the center for summertime water sports. Great summer jobs are a plenty here. Bungee jumping is one of the thrilling activities for summer visitors, but what do part-time workers do here? Let's follow this brave woman up the 55-meter tower. It's quite common to see people tremble in fear as they look down from that height. That's when a bungee jump demonstrator comes to rescue. Without hesitation, he does a spectacular dive. Just looking at this footage is enough to convince you of the exhilaration of bungee jumping. He looks composed and professional even when he makes a landing at the end of the jump. The part-time workers' demonstration reassures the hesitant jumpers. The vacationers wouldn't have been able to make such special memories if it were not for these part-time jumpers. No job is easy, but these young part-time workers seem to be enjoying their unusual summer jobs. Now we'll take a look at the markets, followed by the world weather. That's it for this edition of News Today. We'll see you again at the same time tomorrow. Have a great day.